Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video, and yes, uh, continuing reviewing uh, the Marvel movies uh, from the Marvel Legacy movies and the MCU movies. So now we've gone back to the X-Men franchise, now we've come to the second X-Men film, X2, uh, the X, uh, yeah, the uh, X-Men United. Yes, and everybody considers this, you know, the best X-Men film of all time. And to be honest, you know, I guess, like, well, I can't deny it. Like, you know, it is a good X-Men film, definitely, in, and in the X-Men trilogy. You know, the, fir the, thir the first three films, you know, and, you know, for it being a trilogy, so, you know. Um, so X2, X-Men United, it was, it's really good, and, um because it's got a good story to it, and uh, this is the only X-Men film in the X-Men trilogy that's, like, two hours long, while the first and the, and the last, you know, were only one hour long. So, with the cast of characters, of course, with the return of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier, Anna Paquin as Rogue, Famic uh, ja Jansen, I think I said her full name right, as Jean Grey, Sir Ian McKellen as Eric slash Magneto, uh, James Marston as Cyclops, Halle Berry, Storm, and uh, Sean Ashmore as Iceman slash Bobby, and uh, with new additions, like, uh, for example, the opening to this film is really awesome for sure. Um, Alan Cumming as Nightcrawler, and him breaking into the White House, you know, first being in disguise and then you know, pardon my French, all hell breaks loose, and he attacks the, the White House security guards, and with Mozart playing, you know, it's, it's really awesome, for sure. The Mozart goes really well with that sequence, and I'm not really sure, like, maybe Nightcrawler wasn't going, maybe, I'm not sure if he was going to kill the president, but for one thing, uh, the knife that he carried and was, he was gonna do something, like, it did have something attached to it, like a message, basically. It's something about mutants. Um, Nightcrawl Nightcrawler does get wounded, and he disappears after, you know, like, he was about to do something to the president. I, I don't know, stab him, or j just whatever. Just, like, put it right next to him on the table. That, that ba basically, you know, if he was gonna do that. I don't, I'm not really sure. Let me tell you, Alan Cumming was really good as Nightcrawler, and he's, very, I want to say from what I heard, very underrated for, for his performance as Nightcrawler. He did such a fantastic job as Nightcrawler, and for him being the first actor to portray Nightcrawler, and for him being Nightcrawler in live action, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be up for it if he, if in any way possible he would come back as Nightcrawler, like if he would be, if he would be brought into the MCU any of the X-Men cast, like, come on, like, that would be great, we're already getting, we're already getting Patrick Stewart back as Charles Xavier, so, you know, in Doctor Strange 2, but anyway, so, continuing on, like, some other new characters, like, of course, we have Pyro, play, uh, Johnny, played by Aaron Stanford, I, you know what, I thought, the character of Pyro and Aaron Stanford, he was good in this, but my parents my parents said they kind of didn't like him. I guess the character and the actor himself, I, don't, I thought he was good, so, you know, he nailed it. I, I think he nailed Pyro, in my opinion. Uh, more characters like um, Daniel Cudmore, if I'm saying his last name right, who is Colossus. We get Colossus in this. The return of uh, Robert uh, Kelly, you know, uh, Senator Ke Keeley, Senator Kelly, yeah played once again by Bruce Davison, although technically it's Mystique in disguise as Senator Keeley. Um, and of course, uh, Raven slash Mystique, once again played by Rebecca Romaine. And um, and the the main villain of, of the second X-Men film, Magneto, not, Magneto is technically not the main villain of this, but the main villain is William Stryker, played by Brian Cox. He was fantastic in this, and I think he really enjoyed playing this role. I think you can definitely tell for this movie. And William Stryker's son, uh, Jason Stryker, played by Michael Reed McKay. Yeah, I remember he, for those of us that would know, he also, he was also Bane in Batman and Robin. The funny thing is, him as Bane and as Jason Stryker, he doesn't, he has zero lines but he did. He still did an amazing job playing those, especially Jason Stryker. Just that, just that, the facial expressions he has and those two colored eyes. I think one that's blue and green. 
yeah, and Jason being a mutant as well. And the thing is with William Stryker, like, him, him planning to kill all mutants, and he, uh, and there was a trap set, like, a, that William Stryker did. First, he laid a trap for Charles Xavier and Cyclops. They visited uh, Magneto in his plastic cell. Uh, well, first, yeah, Stryker visited Magneto, and basically he tortured Eric to get information about the X-Mansion and Cere Cerebro, uh, that room, of course, where Charles goes in and he puts that helmet, you know, on his bald head, so to, you know, uh, locate the humans and the mutants. So, so, you know, when Charles and Cyclops visit, you know, Eric, you know, uh, there was a trap set, like, you know, Charles gets unconscious, you know, because of gas comes into Eric's cell and, you know, Eric you know, told told Charles that, you know, that he basically told Stryker everything, you know, about the X-Mansion, you know, and Cerebro, and, you know, you should have killed me when you had the chance, and Cyclops uh, getting knocked out and fighting off against, un you know, a mutant that Stryker took advantage of, you know, and because uh, uh, of uh, a spell, a spell, or, like, you know, a spell or whatever it is, you know, like, hypnotized her or whatever, um... Well, we're, we're, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lady uh, Deaths, is that nice? I don't know. It's not showing the full name, but played by Kelly Who, and basically is has, like, long, like, nails and such, you know? A bit similar to Wolverine, but, you know. Um, and so, you know, Cyclops and Charles, they're captured, and then Stryker's uh, army, his, his force, comes in uh, one evening, and, well, on that night, uh, where, uh, they basically... Uh, the X Mansion is invaded. Wolverine, uh, like kills the the soldiers and uh, Colossus and all the other mutant students. They get out of there while you know Pyro, Bobby, and Rogue. They are they 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 stick with uh, Logan and of course they get out of there. Well, at one point, yeah, Stryker and Logan come face to face. Although Logan really can't remember Stryker because. You know, because it's, it's established in the first movie, in the first X-Men film, and in this, because Wolverine has lost memory of how he became, like, who he is with the claws, like, the steel claws, and, you know, etc. And, um, you know, they get into Cyclops' car. First, you know, Wolverine took Cyclops' motorcycle, high-speed motorcycle, and then, and now he, you know, he, like, hijacks and uses Cyclops' uh car and because there's no keys to start the ignition he uses his claws to do that and like does the middle finger and yeah it's pretty funny um and so of course yeah uh striker and his army they break into cerebro and uh and oh yeah i also almost forgot to mention storm and gene they go after nightcrawler and they were going to bring him to the x mansion but as we all know what just happened and then, so, Bobby, Rogue, Logan, and Pyro, they go to Bobby's house, and we see Bobby's parents and his brother, and th that one funny scene where, <laughs> when Logan gets, I guess, a, a can of beer or whatever, like a bottle, basically, in the, in the refrigerator, and he hears, like, a noise, and he ignites his claws, and, you know, right at the cat, and the cat licks one of his claws, and it's funny. <laughs> so, anyways, and... At one point, like, Rogue and Bobby do kiss, but it, it seemed like it worked at first, but when they really start making out, that's when, well, with Rogue's powers, like, almost, like, has, has Bobby in a coma, you know, as I'm sure, you know. Um, and so, you know, Bobby's parents not really used to the whole mutant thing, and, you know, even when, what, what Bobby's dad said, you know, the mutant problem, and Logan just says, you know, what mutant, what mutant problem, and at one point, you know, because Bobby does reveal his, his mutant powers to his family, and, God, talk about, you know, just like a self, like a mean brother, like, you know, Bobby's brother calls the police on them, they arrive, but Pyro, he, you know, at one point unleashes his flames on the police, uh, Gene, Storm, and Nightcrawler, they arrive, and they get on the X-Jet, I think that's what it's called, yeah, and at one point the military chases after them, thinking that, you know, they're a threat or something, of course, they do manage to escape, thanks, you know, because Storm does uses does use her powers, like, t summon tornadoes, but Magneto saves them by catching their, their jet, you know. When will these people learn to fly, as he says to Mystique? I'm sure that's how he says it, yeah. And so, 
Magneto, Mystique, and the other X-Men, they have to team up to, like, go and s defeat Stryker, etc. And at one point, you know, Logan admits his feelings to Jean, but Jean tells him that, you know, he she's in love with Scott. And that's, that's really, that was really good right there, you know, because, you know, who she truly loves. And Mystique, out of nowhere you know, has a thing for Logan now, and that's the only time that that's, 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 uh, you know, established in the, in the, in the X-Men films. Uh, I mean, it did happen in the comics, so did say Wolverine, a thing happened with, a thing that went on, that happened with Storm and Wolverine in the comics, you know. But, of course, they make their way to the, to the base, you know, of Stryker, um, you know, they, they break in, and a fight between Wolverine and um, uh, uh, Kelly Who's character, you know, the claws. And I just like it, because when she ignites, you know, her long, nail her long nail claws, you know, and, like, pardon my French, but it is funny, because, yeah, and Logan's reaction, you know, holy shit. And so you have that going on, the fight between her and Wolverine, but also uh, Jean fights off against Cyclops, but, you know, Jean found a way to, you know, get Cyclops, you know, like, unconscious, like, you know, out, you know, knock it out of the, the, the spell that he was, like, like, that he was hypnotized to, you know, and, uh, you know, of course, and when Logan defeats, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, Lady Death's, uh, wait, what's her character's name? I forget, um, I'm not, I'm not really, yeah, no, 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 okay, Lady Deathstrike, okay, I mean, the, the full name wasn't showing, Lady Deathstrike, that's her name, like, Logan does kill Lady Deathstrike, but igniting something in her, and, you know, and you can see in her eyes that she was waking up from the spell that she was, you know, like, wait, 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 and it's like on the back of their necks, you know, from Eric to Cyclops and her, so she woke up from that, and she was back to normal, but it was too late, you know, she was already dead, so, yeah. Um, and with, uh, Jason commanding Charles in his mind to kill the mutants, that starts to happen, but Eric slash Magneto's the only one that's not getting affected by this, not being, you know, tortured or anything like that. He has the helmet on, and I just like it. When he enters into the, like, uh, custom-made Cerebro that they built, you know, he, he looks at Jason, Jason looks at Eric, and he's just, because he's got the helmet on. You can't get me. And and uh, Mystique, disguised as Stryker, you know, whispers into Jason's ear, there's been a change of plans. And he whispers to, to Jason, you know, to, in, you know, instead kill the humans. So at that point, yeah, Magneto and Mystique, they go back to being villains, you know. I mean, they did help a little bit earlier, but they went back to being evil. And Eric saying, you know, to Charles, you know, goodbye, Charles. Like, thinking, he, I, th I guess he thought that would, that would be the last time he would see Charles. But, nope, until the third film in the X-Men trilogy, uh, they would see each other one last time, so. And so, and even before they, they escape, Eric and Mystique, well, Logan managed to, you know, capture Stryker and chain him around to the helicopter, but Eric moved him away and moved him in a different place and right before they take off in the helicopter pyro tags along and because you know after a little conversation that that he had with magneto so you know so pyro betrayed betrayed his friends and the x-men and joined the, the dark side basically of magneto and mystique so there's that and that was that would be the last we see them as they fly into the, they fly away in the helicopter uh, water starts coming in, the dam breaks, um, Storm and Nightcrawler, they first save the captured mutants from the X-Mansion, and then they go in and they save Charles Xavier, they all make their way out of there, and, you know, Jason being defeated, he's just left there, while everything's just crumbling and falling apart, you know, and as they make their way, you know, outside, and the helicopter's gone, you know, it was right here, as Logan said, Mystique piloting the the ex jet she's just have, just freaking out over it. <laughs> uh, she's never flown it before, obviously, but she did her best. Um, and Jean sacrificing herself to save all the others from the water, etc. But there could have been many other ways to for her not to die. But oh well, it's ju it's just how the movie. It's just how it was. It's just the movie itself, how it was done, etc. And Logan just one last conversation with striker being chained you know to a wall and you know 
I take my chances as he takes off like the necklace he had of when he was in war and, you know, Stryker's last words, you know, one day, blah, blah, blah. And yep. And Gene being killed from the water and emotional stuff and Nightcrawler praying and they come to the president's, uh, the, the, to the White House and the president, um, and they tell him that not all mutants are bad. And, you know, even Logan get, having the last words to the president will be watching. So they stopped him right before the president was about to say something about the mutants. So, yep, good timing there. So, and the epilogue, they're all in the mansion and everything's back to normal and Cyclops still being torn about, you know, Gene and Gene getting the last lines of the film. And we see the water and... The reflection in the water is the Firebird, and boom, the credits roll. And a little bit of it is similar to, say, the ending to The Wrath of Khan. You know, Spock getting the last lines, saying the famous quotes, you know, space the final frontier, while Gene says, you know, the quotes, mutation is the key to our evolution, blah, blah, blah. And a bit of the music is a bit similar, you know, da, 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 that. So, you know. Um, if, yeah, so you guys probably know, and even Nostalgia Critic established it too, so there you go. But, with all that being said, X, X2, sorry, X2, X-Men United, and technically it is X-Men 2, it's a good X-Men film, I can't deny that, it is a really good one, and people say that it's the best X-Men film, and... It is, but I don't know if it is the best. It's hard to tell which is the best X-Men film. They're all great, in my opinion. Um, yes, that in, like I also like X-Men Origins, Wolverine, Last Stand, Dark Phoenix. And wait until you see my review of Last Stand, which, coincidentally, very soon that will be the next uh, X-Men film to review, of course. So, yeah. So, X -Men, X2, X-Men United is a good X-Men film for sure. And how do I rate uh, X2 X-Men United? Well, heck, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 stars for the second X-Men film, the second installment in the X-Men trilogy, and in the X-Men franchise, I should say. Uh, you guys let me know what you think of X2 X-Men United, uh, what you thought of my review. Leave comments and give this review a like as always, and there's still more to come reviewing like, say, the, the X-Men films and the X-Men franchise and Marvel films, etc. So keep looking forward to that. So again, with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of X2 X-Men United. More reviews coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward. And I'll see you guys in the next video slash review. And stay tuned later this week, where we will be going back to the MCU, where this time we see the return of Thor. You know what I'm talking about, Thor 2. Stay tuned for that. Take care, and peace out. X-Men Unite.